Hello, everyone! Throughout history, humanity endured its fair share of tough times, but it's during these times that remarkable people emerge, shining brightly amidst all the insanity. This film tells the story of one such exceptional person. Tadaus Petrakovsky closes his eyes, reminiscing about a sunny afternoon when he practiced boxing in his backyard without a worry in the world. Those cherished moments are forever lost now. The ex-boxer ended up among other Polish prisoners in the terrible conditions of the Auschwitz concentration camp. Germans moved through the rows of prisoners, putting down their names and occupations, stripping away their former lives and assigning them numbers. Tadaus becomes number 77. All of them are enemies of the Third Reich destined to be eliminated within three months. Extermination will start with the Jews, followed by the priests, and then the rest. Like many, Tadaus was taken away against his will by soldiers, leaving him forever separated from his family and young son. They didn't even have a chance to say their goodbyes. Now Tadaus lies on the floor of a dirty barracks, struggling to accept his fate. Sleep is elusive, as his fellow prisoners, dozens in number, cough all the time while crammed closely together. In the morning, all prisoners are gathered to do hard physical work. They use pickaxes to chip away at rocks while ruthless guards keep a watchful eye. Tadaus notices the lifeless body of an elderly man covered with a newspaper. He slips the paper under his clothes to shield himself from the harsh cold. At lunchtime, the prisoners receive a watery soup, and among them, there's a boy named Yannick. The older, less scrupulous prisoners frequently steal Yannick's meal. As the work resumes, prisoners are cynically forced to build their own barracks and hang barbed wire over the fence surrounding them. One day, an elderly prisoner hatches an escape plan. When a guard overhears his careless words, he strikes the old man on the head with a shovel, killing him on the spot. What's even more horrifying is that the killer is a fellow Polish prisoner, a collaborator who carried out the enemy's dirty work. The next day, Yannick approaches Tadaus, saying that he saw the man's boxing match on TV. It was during the Polish championship that people started calling Tadaus Teddy because he looked like an American boxer. Sadly, Tadaus ended up losing the match by the score, and Yannick thinks it was unfair. Tadaus responds by suggesting that it's best to leave the past behind, adding that they're all in the same boat now, with none of them winners. He advises Yannick to fight for his meals, as it's the only way he'll stand a chance at survival. Soon, Tadaus is ordered to help out in the household of a German officer situated right inside the camp. There's an extravagant mansion complete with servants right on the campgrounds. The officer's young son scampers down the stairs, closely followed by his mother, who relishes her position and keeps giving orders left and right. Tadaus takes a brief pause to take in the opulent decor, which stands in stark contrast to the humble barracks. He notices a platter of apples and quietly steals some, an act that goes unnoticed by Officer Gerhardt as he leaves the house. Tadaus comes back to the workshop and tosses one of the apples to Yannick. The kid eagerly bites into it, but then spots an elderly man named Eric nearby and decides to share. The boxer lets out a deep sigh, thinking that the kind-hearted boy might get in trouble if he can't stand up for himself. Tadaus hands his apple to Yannick, but just then, German soldiers storm into the barracks. Gerhardt orders the prisoners to be taken outside. The first three of them are shot without any warning. Next, Tadaus, Yannick, and Eric are brought out and lined up against the wall. The old man is told to place the apple on his head. A shot rings out, killing the old man instantly. The German soldier didn't even bother to aim properly. Now it's Tadaus's turn to hold the apple. However, instead of complying, Tadaus brazenly bites into the fruit right in front of the officer. He's savoring what looks to be his last meal. This is when Yannick starts quoting lines from William Tell. His father had introduced him to this play written by the German writer, Friedrich Schiller, where the hero had to shoot an apple off his son's head with an arrow. The educated boy makes an impression on the officer, and he lowers his gun. Rather than facing execution, both Poles received a punishment of 50 lashes and are sent to penal company. The secretary complains that he had already noted down five men is shot instead of four. In response, Gerhardt kills a random innocent prisoner. Now the numbers are in order. Yannick is placed on the penalty table, while Tadaus is instructed to observe and count the strikes. In the meantime, Gerhardt goes through the belongings of the deceased prisoners, inspecting a necklace and a tiny toy monkey. In the night, Yannick wrestles with the pain from his injuries, with Tadaus doing his best to provide support. Tadaus is burdened by guilt for involving the young boy in the foolish apple theft. Still, 
all things considered, their situation isn't the worst. They've managed to stay alive. Meanwhile, the Jewish prisoners are let outside, being told they'll freshen up in a bathhouse and enjoy a hot meal. This group includes many women and children. They leave their clothing outside, and the heavy iron doors are shut behind them. However, instead of the expected hot water and food, they are exposed to deadly poison gas. Very early in the morning, the prisoners are roused from their sleep and marched off to the stone quarry. They don't work as efficiently because they are hungry and exhausted. To taunt them, one of the guards tosses a piece of bread onto the ground and savors the sight of the famished men fighting for the scraps. Tadash and Yannick stick together, trying not to attract attention. Meanwhile, the guards put the prisoners face to face, forcing them to slap each other. The one who wins is promised a slice of sausage, but when the loser collapses to the ground, the other man doesn't get anything, since it's only the first round. The guard singles out Tadash for another round and points at him. Tadash is placed opposite the previous winner, who attempts to slap him. Tadash skillfully dodges the blows, and even when the guard himself takes a swing, Tadash proves to be quicker, causing the burly man to tumble. They consider punishing him, but another guard, Walter, steps in. He wants to test his mettle against the prisoner, and offers bread as a prize. Tadash is uneasy, knowing that the guards won't take kindly to him striking one of their own. However, Walter insists on starting the bout, and Tadash finds himself in a familiar situation, albeit with a large, flat slab as the arena. The opponent makes several unsuccessful attacks, failing to land a single hit. Tadash hesitates to retaliate, but then he finally hits his opponent in the nose. Yannick is ecstatic, but Tadash is prepared to face a punishment. Fortunately, Walter steps in to stop the guards and asks to give Tadash bread. He also asks where Tadash learned boxing, and Walter realizes that they had crossed paths during a championship in Hamburg long ago. Tadash returns to the barracks with a large loaf of bread and generously shares it with everyone. Yannick has already told everyone about what happened, and the others readily accept Tadash as a hero. Sadly, Yannick can't enjoy his meal as he's suffering from a severe cough. Tadash realizes that he must save the kid, or else he'll succumb to the illness. Desperate, Tadash seeks out Walter, pleading for help, namely food and medicine. He's open to doing whatever Walter wants in return. The officer agrees and leads Tadaus to the camp supervisors. Er is with the neighbor. We will him aufmessen and er wird mit den besten bestehen. His file does feature an impressive track record of athletic achievements, earning him nicknames like the Gentleman Boxer and the King of Dodges from Warsaw. However, right now he doesn't look like a strong contender for the Polish championship. The supervisor describes him as a chicken that has been plucked from feathers and has doubts about his ability to last even five minutes in the boxing ring. Still, one of the Germans suggests organizing an entertaining event for the soldiers, who recently got drunk and made a brawl in a nearby village. This idea gets approval, and the supervisor orders to find Tadaush a worthy opponent. Soon, Tadaush steps into a real boxing ring. The first round is announced. As soon as the gong rings, the German soldiers burst into loud cheers for their fellow countrymen. Together with the flurry of punches, insults rain down upon the Polish fighter. Only one young German boy cheers for Tadeusz. However, the fight is going bad for the man. Gasping for breath and sporting some nasty cuts, he barely manages to make it to the second round. His opponent, a heavier and seemingly better fed German, keeps coming at him with powerful attacks. But Tadeusz, the master of dodging punches, still has his tricks up his sleeve. He manages to slip beneath his opponent's outstretched arms, finding the perfect opportunity to launch a counterattack. At this point, the German fighter finds himself cornered, repeatedly taking punches to the face, and Tadaush claims his first victory. The prisoner's victory earns him several loaves of bread. Also, Walter assigns the boxer to work in the stables, which is less grueling than the quarry, so Tadaush won't get exhausted. The boxer reminds the guard about the medicine, and Walter grants him permission to visit the infirmary. While Tadaush is having his wound stitched up, he sees a fellow prisoner named Helsha, who's assisting the doctor. Helsha has lost both her parents, and the woman took her under her wing. Before leaving, Tadaush asks for medication for Yannick. The doctor eagerly helps him and provides extra medicine for other prisoners as well. There's a separate room for sick Poles. Tadaush steps outside, where word has already spread about his triumph, and people congratulate him for humiliating the rival boxer. Inside the infirmary, a few captive doctors are doing what they can for the dying patients. They just lie on the floor, bleeding and in agony. The limited supplies from the administration, like bandages and pain relievers, aren't enough. 
The doctors are grateful for the medicine and say they could help transfer Yannick to a hospital for Germans if Tadouche can get them more medicine. Tadouche is hesitant, but Yannick's life is on the line, so he has no choice. Meanwhile, Officer Gerhardt enjoys a family dinner at the mansion. His young son, Udi, approaches him, asking how a German boxer could lose to a dark-skinned American. Growing up under the influence of German propaganda, Udi can't wrap his mind around it. Gerhardt explains that the match was rigged, and he sees boxing as a sport for the peasants. Even though Udi is a fan of the sport, his father wants him to take up horse riding lessons instead. However, his son disagrees, eagerly anticipating more boxing matches at the camp. He recently read that boxing is like chess, only a hundred times faster. While Tadao strolls down the street, the collaborator spots him. He realizes that the boxer doesn't just like to swing his fists for nothing, but there is still only one way out of this camp for him. Ich kenne solche wie dich. Er klammert euch mit allen Mitteln ans Leben. Tadouche heads back to the barracks and gives Yannick some medicine. Despite being short of breath, Yannick's still keen on learning the art of boxing from a real pro. Tadouche says it's important to conserve energy for a decisive strike. However, Yannick realizes that facing the Germans won't be a fair game, so he needs to come up with alternative tactics. In response, Tadouche shares a tale from ancient Greece about the origins of the Olympic Games. All participants vowed to live in identical conditions, sleeping on the ground covered with animal skins and swimming in cold water. It was all about giving everyone an equal shot at victory. Tadouche firmly believes that genuine victory requires you to respect both yourself and your opponent. Yannick peacefully drifts off to sleep listening to the story. Over the next few weeks, Tadouche regains his strength and spends his time training in the stables. Yannick gradually recovers and starts assisting at the hospital along Helsha. It's clear that there's a spark between the two teenagers. Meanwhile, other prisoners suffer from escalating mistreatment and physical abuse. As the German captors devise new ways to entertain themselves, like forcing an imprisoned pianist to play for them beside gallows adorned with lanterns. Tadouche has become a force to be reckoned with in the boxing ring, winning consecutive matches and providing food and medicine to his fellow prisoners. Unfortunately, the gas chambers keep undermining his efforts. Nevertheless, the fortunate survivors eagerly await each of the Poles' victories against the next German boxer. Shortly after, the camp supervisor arrives at the stables to get his horse. Tadouche hides away food and essential supplies. However, the German officer notices that the boxer isn't as emaciated as he used to be. He approaches him and remarks that Tadouche will win as long as it entertains the Germans, and when they get bored, he'll have to lose. The officer taunts Tadouche by suggesting that defeat runs in the blood of all Poles. Tadouche calmly takes this insult and chooses not to say anything in response. The next day, the Germans arrange a tougher opponent for Tadouche, plucking the heavyweight from a different camp. This burly fighter chases Tadouche all around the ring, yet he can't catch the nimble boxer. Tadouche makes the big guy exhaust himself, forcing him to lower his guard. From there, it's just a matter of skill to land a precise punch that knocks him out. The prisoners at Auschwitz celebrate their champion's victory, chanting his nickname, Teddy. Together with Yannick, they once again share bread with their famished fellow prisoners. Gerhardt, though, grows increasingly anxious by this turn of events. That evening, he contemplates how to rob the prisoners of their newfound joy. Suddenly, he hears an unusual noise coming from the staircase. His son Udi collapses and faints. Gerhardt calls for the doctor, who delivers grim news. Udi has typhoid fever, an illness with no reliable cure. Gerhardt is shaken because Udi hasn't been in contact with any sick prisoners from the camp. Yet there's nothing doctors can do except pray for the boy. The next day, Tadouche witnesses a cart carrying dead bodies from the camp, and among them, he sees his recent rival. This deeply disturbs him. Later that night, he realizes that Yannick is not in his bed. He quietly passes by the sleeping guard and finds Yannick on the street, reminiscing about his deceased father. Only the best people will come back to heaven. Yannick believes that one of the stars in the sky is his father. Tadouche says that Yannick's dad watches over him with pride from above. The boxer is contemplating quitting the fights, because in the camp, it's not a sport, but rather a cruel form of entertainment for the tormentors. However, Yannick disagrees with this notion. He believes that Tadouche fights not only for himself, but also for all the prisoners. It's important for them to hold on to hope, and that can't be taken away so easily. Tadouche understands this well. He feels it when he shares a bit of bread with the captive children. Later, Yannick gives his beloved an angel figurine carved from wood. Helsha expresses her gratitude with a kiss on the cheek, 
Surprisingly, even in such grim times, there are moments of joy. In stark contrast, Gerhard is having the worst day of his life. Udi has succumbed to the disease, and they've removed his lifeless body from their grand mansion, leaving an immense void in his father's heart. With teary eyes, he watches as the hearse takes away his dead son and devastated wife. Yet even in the face of this tragedy, Gerhardt doesn't change his outlook on the world. That same night, Gerhardt puts together another group of prisoners destined for the gas chamber. They're lined up and instructed to undress, once again deceived by the promise of a warm shower. At this moment, Yannick notices his friend being forcibly taken by two guards, who have caught her sharing stolen food with the other prisoners. One of the drunk German soldiers orders Helsha to take off her clothes and threatens her with a gun. However, the girl snatches the weapon from the clumsy man's hands and pulls the trigger, killing the soldier. In response, the other guards promptly open fire on Helsha. Yannick watches in shock as his beloved dies, and along with her, all the men in the lineup also fall to the gunfire. Amidst the chaos, even Gerhardt accidentally sustains an injury to his arm. Stricken with grief, Yannick flees and seeks solace in Tadaus' embrace. With tears in his eyes, he shares the heartbreaking news of Helsha's death. The boxer is shocked, but does his best to console his grief-stricken friend. <laughs> now Yannick needs to hurry back to the infirmary. Gerhardt is getting his wounds tended to there. Recognizing Yannick as the admirer of German poetry, Gerhardt asks him to do the injection instead of the doctor. Yannick obviously has no clue about how to do it correctly. Gerhardt warns him that if the needle goes into the wrong place, it could kill him. He senses Yannick's anger and suffering. The German defends his terrible acts by claiming that God allows them to happen. After all, today a bullet only grazed his arm instead of piercing his heart. In response, Yannick argues that while God might be harsh, he doesn't compel a person to harm others. For this, Gerhardt decides to take the boy out of the hospital for punishment. In the morning, Tadaus is working under Walter's watchful eye when they spot a German soldier violently beating prisoners. This soldier, known by the nickname Hammer, has gained notoriety for his ability to knock someone out with a single punch. Despite Walter's warning, Tadaus remains determined to approach the camp supervisors. He suggests a boxing match against the German fighter and insists that if he wins, Yannick must be released. In case they refuse the challenge, he threatens to stop participating in the bouts that entertain the German soldiers. The camp supervisor responds with a sly grin and agrees to arrange the fight for later that evening, expecting the Polish boxer to lose. Soon, Hammer and Fighter 77 are getting ready for a match. Other prisoners are used as anchors for the ring's ropes, with Walter taking on the role of the referee. When the camp supervisor gives the signal, the fight begins. Teddy moves swiftly, but his opponent remains unfazed by his hooks. Hammer counters with a punch, missing his opponent and knocking down a human pole in the corner. The Germans find this quite entertaining. Tadaus gets punched in his side and drops to one knee in pain but quickly recovers, landing a barrage of punches on his German adversary. The end of the round spares Hammer the humiliation. The prisoners start chanting Teddy, which greatly annoys the camp supervisors. Tadaus hopes to see Yannick in the crowd, can't find him anywhere, and he fears the worst. Despite that, Tadaus pushes forward and gets ready for the second round. As he takes a big gulp of water, he stands up but suddenly feels something is wrong. His head is spinning and his vision blurs, making it clear that he's been poisoned. In this disoriented state, he fails to dodge a punch aimed at his chin and ends up falling to the ground. The Germans are already celebrating Hammer's victory, but the prisoners start getting unruly. Suddenly, a siren blares and all the prisoners are forced into a line. Tadaus struggles to stand up, and the guards beat him with sticks. Tadaus vomits, but it at least provides him with some relief. Though still gasping for breath, the boxer says he's ready to resume the fight. In response, the Germans drag a battered and tormented Yannick in front of him. They tell him that if he's so eager to throw punches, Yannick will be his next opponent. When Tadaus declines, the camp supervisor threatens to shoot Yannick and then Tadaus. The boy doesn't dare raise a hand against his friend and the camp supervisor issues the order to open fire. <sighs> Gerhardt hesitates, and Yannick turns around to look at those who have been tormenting him. At that moment, a gunshot rings out, killing the boy. The shot is fired by the cruel collaborator behind him. Tadaus cries out in anguish and is struck unconscious with the butt of a rifle. 
The guards then proceed to drag Tadash away, binding him to a pole by his hands for the entire night. As a cruel warning to other prisoners, they hang a sarcastic sign around his neck that reads, Champion. Briefly regaining consciousness, Tadash bears witness to another group of prisoners being led towards the gas chamber. The agonized wails of women, children, and the elderly blend into an unending, horrifying cacophony. In the morning, they untie Tadouche and he falls to the ground, unable to stand. After regaining his strength, he makes his way to the pit where they burn the bodies. He tries to find Yannick's body in the mound of charred remains, but it proves impossible. Frustrated, he lies down on the ash-covered earth, feeling defeated. His efforts had been in vain. The sadist had toyed with him, leading him on with false hope. Tadouche had willingly walked into their trap, and his foolishness had given them immense satisfaction. Then, unexpectedly, he sees a blackened angel statue, the gift from Yannick to Helsha. Tadouche holds it in his hands and finds the strength to carry on. Meanwhile, the camp supervisors have already found a new toy. Inside the boxing ring, Hammer faces off against another prisoner. The outcome is almost certain as he is knocked out cold within moments. Bruised and covered in mud, Tadouche makes his way to the front row, demanding a rematch. One of the officers visiting the camp recognizes Teddy as a boxer he used to referee before the war. He's eager to watch the match and places a hefty bet on Teddy. The camp supervisor eagerly anticipates the upcoming showdown. The Polish prisoner stares fearlessly into the eyes of Hammer, and the fight begins. Tadouche skillfully avoids punches, but exhaustion takes its toll. A punch to the face knocks Tadouche down. Amidst the shouts of fellow prisoners and guards, he manages to rise just in the nick of time. With a swollen eye, he continues to engage with the opponent. Teddy has nothing to lose, and Hammer is getting tired. Even the direct punches no longer have any effect on Tadouche. With a maniacal grin, Teddy spits out blood and continues his relentless advance. The German boxer appears bewildered. None of his previous opponents have endured such a pummeling. Tadouche blocks another punch with his forehead, and Hammer ends up with broken fingers. Teddy retaliates, knocking his opponent out which earns him applause from the crowd. The visiting officer requests Tadouche's transfer to his camp, and the camp supervisor approves. The following day, Gerhardt visits the stables and tells Tadouche about a dream where he found himself surrounded by portraits of people with fear and hatred on their faces. He tried to remove these portraits, only to realize that the frames were actually windows. Gerhardt then informs Tadouche that he will be leaving Auschwitz to move to a different camp, and then gives him his son's scrapbook filled with newspaper clippings about boxing. And this comes from jemanden, der deinen Sport viel besser verstand als ich. The champion receives a heartfelt farewell from everyone at the camp, leaving with their utmost respect. Tadouche carried on touring concentration camps as a boxer until Germany's defeat in World War II. However, when the Allied forces finally put an end to the horrors of the Nazis, he was able to fulfill his dream. He returned to his hometown of Warsaw and started teaching boxing to kids. Throughout his life, he kept the angel figurine carved by Yannick on his desk. The movie is based on the real story of Tadeusz Teddy Petrakowski, a prisoner of the Auschwitz concentration camp. Throughout his time there, he participated in around 50 boxing matches, with only one loss to the Dutch middleweight champion Lynn Sanders. Teddy was indeed assigned the number 77 when he first arrived at the camp on June 14, 1940, among some of the first prisoners. The movie didn't include some important things Tadeusz did while he was in the camp. He was involved in an assassination attempt on Auschwitz commandant Rudolf Haas by tampering with the saddle on his horse. This caused the German to break his leg, but it was considered an accident, so the prisoners weren't punished. Later, Piotrkowski killed Haas's dog, which had been trained to attack Jewish prisoners and had killed at least one of them. The prisoners ended up eating the dog. Piotrkowski also shared information with the partisan resistance and sabotaged the camp's work. During the final boxing match, Officer Albert Lutkemeyer was one of the spectators. Tadeusz did meet him before the war at a boxing tournament in Poland, where Lutkemeyer acted as a referee. To prepare for the role, actor Piotr Glowacki lost 40 pounds and spent a year honing his boxing skills. Over that year, he also did various exercises to recreate the physique of a prisoner of a concentration camp. As always, check out the movie name in the description below. 
In the meantime, tell us in the comments, do you think a tragedy like World War II can happen again? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button to get even more cool recaps.